The world's most powerful operating rocket took flight just a few moments ago. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy blasted off from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The rocket is carrying 24 experimental satellites. This is the third trip to space for the rocket. Its 2018 test launch lofted founder Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster into the solar system. The second mission in April carried a Saudi communication satellite to orbit. The mission was commissioned by the U.S. Department of Defense. SpaceX is putting satellites into orbit for various agencies, including NASA. We're getting ready to throttle down. This is confirmed. Cheering in the background. It's going on midnight, but a lot of people here at SpaceX, side boosters have separated. They're getting ready for their burn back to Cape Canaveral. You can see on the left and right views, the side boosters have ignited. Well, the Falcon Heavy went off into space. Here's what came back from space. A Soyuz aircraft carrying astronauts from Canada, Russia, and the U.S. has returned home. The Russian Soyuz MS-11 spacecraft undocked from the International Space Station at 5 a.m. Indian Standard Time. The capsule was carrying two astronauts who completed their first flights, Anne McLean of the U.S. and David Shah-Jacques of Canada. Also aboard was Expedition Commander. Oleg Kononenko, who ended his fourth space mission. For Eastern Mongolia. So again, the Soyuz spacecraft undocked Oleg from the space station for the first time in 204 days. The crew completed a 204-day mission spanning 3,264 orbits of the Earth and a journey of 86.4 million miles. On the ground in Kazakhstan, they were met by Russian recovery forces together with representatives and medical teams from NASA and the Canadian Space Agency. And we are starting to see crew members now, back on Earth, what do you do when you want to start driving? Well, it's simple. Enroll into a driving school, get a driving license, and get behind the steering wheel. But this is the case for most of us, and not all of us. For women in Saudi Arabia, though, the journey from the four walls of their homes to the driver's seat is an ordeal of sorts. Sure, Saudi women have the right to drive, but in reality, this right remains confined to theory or the whims of their husbands or the male members of their families. So the women in Saudi Arabia have come up with a solution to ensure that their husbands allow them to drive. The solution is a marriage contract. Saudi women today are including clauses such as the right to drive and right to work in their marriage contracts. Like my son. They say it helps and them I in mean, being independent and also avoid any marital conflicts. Remember, Saudi Arabia is a highly patriarchal society. Though technically women do not need the nod of their so-called male guardians in order to drive, when it comes to studying or getting a passport or traveling abroad, they are at the mercy of their husbands or fathers. 